Okay, um, does everybody hear me okay? Yes. Uh, when I got up this morning, I was hell-bent on doing this in Swedish. But having seen Klaus's presentation, I think I'll forego the Midwest Svenska. Uh, Canadian Midwest Svenska, I'll say, for the second Canadian presenter here today. Um, I don't think I'll do it in English, just because uh, I want to bring my A-game. So, Dr. Sibor Lokala, the general title. Um, what I'm going to talk about specifically is more about uh, daylight regulation. Now, why is it, who am I and why do I feel like I can talk about this? Well, uh, as Paul Rogers, uh, out for Bauer Architecture in Stockholm. We have uh, a special division, which is three people, specialists, uh, who do simulation on daylight, pretty much full time. That's a very strange thing. How do we get to that? Um, well, through my work as an assessor, both at Media Bignet and Bria, uh, it became very apparent around 2009 that there wasn't much knowledge in this area. So 2009, I, I founded a group uh, on LinkedIn called Svensk Dexus uh, The original thought was there would be maybe, oh, 20 or 30 of us talking very nerdy things about radiance and input parameters. So. But the fact of the matter is the problems with the code, uh, a lot of questions surrounding that. So now the group is, I think it's over 260 people. Uh, so we handle all sorts of different technical calculation questions, but also about the code itself. Now there are a couple of, uh, of other specialists in this group who I've got together with uh, over the past three years. And we've been working together with uh, Bo Verkent, uh, who I'm actually going down to meet again tomorrow for the third time in, uh, in the last two years to discuss the current requirements. Um, the, set of the European standard up there in the corner which is the coming European Daylight Standard. Oh, not many of you probably know about that, but it's probably about two years away. It's currently under review. So I sit on the National Review Committee for that. And then over there is a good old Sweden Green Building Council, who you know through Video Big Net and uh, City Lab. And then finally, uh, we've set up the criteria for video, uh, for SWAN and marketing, because they, uh, for daycares and for housing, they require uh, daylight now. And uh, I'm under, soon to be under contract with them for technical uh, advice. Now, in 2015, we published a study uh, because there are so many questions. Ed Yenogawa said, Stax was Croft from uh, SPUF. Um, it was really a survey of what the current conditions were, both for industry and for the code. Uh, since that time, we've, uh, we're now moving on to phase two. Uh, Energy Lindiget has uh, come along as well. And we've added another expert there, uh, Marie-Claude de Bois from Lund. And because the thresholds seem to be largely the problem, uh, the 1% daylight factor, what we've tried to do here is we've gone back and we've tried to find what are our cultural expectations for daylight. So we've taken about 100 buildings of which are housing and we've uh, existing buildings and we've calculated out per oh, oh, 15 thousand rooms, I think it was. Yeah, it's 15,000 rooms. And we're trying to figure out, well, what, what daylight do we expect in our rooms? Is, is it really 1%? Does is, is that really hold water? So we're pretty close. We've generated all the results, and now we're in the process of analyzing and putting it together. That's that we should be together in February. So first of all, daylight, who cares about daylight? Why is it important? Well, I won't spend too much time. We've got other people who are far more knowledgeable than I am to talk about this today. We know there's a lot published. Uh, some of it scientific, some of it maybe less, less so. Uh, but everybody sort of, there's more or less a consensus, you know, the health aspect there. But yeah, energy, uh, there's energy to be saved to some degree. Uh, the best light quality, are people more effective at work? There's good evidence for that. Increased, uh, oh, get fast to get spread. And so, uh, yeah, everybody wants to buy uh, used stuff fresh. There's no, not many people who are buying uh, work on energy effective. Uh, so and that, that's the idea. It's very difficult to prove this last part here with the numbers because obviously when we sell a house or something, there's so many other variables. But uh, I, you can see it, I think, when the real estate agents write their prospectus, how many use often come, there were, those words often come in. So what do we know about daylight? Well, we know, uh, again, this has been covered before there today. We know that we have a very wide spectrum and a very uh, big intensity. So it's very difficult to, to replace this with uh, artificial light sources. And if we do replace it with artificial light sources, our problem is that, well, it's going to cost us a lot of energy for something that is otherwise available for free. 
won't go too much, whoops, sorry, won't go too much into this one, of course, because we've just talked about this, our circadian rhythms and how it's making us sleepy or awake. And I'm hoping right now you have lots of melatonin and you're feeling mm. very awake <laughs> right now. Now, uh, there are some specific studies, I won't go through all of this now, but uh, healthcare specific studies. So uh, later on I'll send a PDF out and maybe you can refer to that in the slides. Uh, Robert Ehrlich, I know he's been here uh, at least once to talk about some of his research. So it's just a list there regarding patient recovery times. Uh, a few regarding staff concerns, but of course I've heard much more today. Uh, so this is just a list that, that I've been working, working from. And then of course there's in the Swedish context, there's, uh, in the Swedish context there's a number of uh, documents referring to the uh, health aspects of daylight. Now, I don't want you to think that daylight is always just let in like crazy and without a problem. Um, glare can be a problem, and I think this is very important to realize that um, if you have discomfort, if, unless you regulate daylight, you, you're going to, as it says there, slower recovery from discomfort, uh, reduced, uh, that, that if you have discomfort from glare, you're actually going to cause problems. So it, it's a little bit like, like this situation. Is it, most people think as a daylight consultant, I'm looking for micotaxis and so much is, and that's, that's not at all. I, I think of it as, as a medicine, you know, everything in its proper dose. It has to be very controlled to work. So what we're really looking for is a, a very controlled daylight. So what's the problem then? Everybody's in agreement, we like daylight, why, why is it so difficult to, to get it to work? Well, there's my little house, or call it a hospital, a little bit like a hospital, but um, we have increased densification, uh, particularly uh, at hospitals, as you try to sort of fill in this ground that you have with the buildings, uh, making it very difficult to, to um, oh, it, it's, it's very, uh, it's very tight, when buildings are very close to one another, daylight becomes very, very difficult. Um, we have what I call it's max meeting, so um, we have very deep buildings often. We're trying to make the most of the, of the area that we have. So maybe that courtyard that was in the middle in the design, which was a nice proportion in the beginning, maybe it's getting thinned down, thinned down, and eventually it's just a little light well and there's not much light getting down. Um, energy effect of Um Here we have um, uh, stricter and stricter energy guides. We have um, maybe thicker walls. Maybe we have a, a darker glass than before because we want to hold up some of the solar loading. Uh, we have maybe smaller windows, uh, thicker, um, uh, more dense house uh, body. Big dense crop is what I'm trying to say. I've been in, Swedish, in Sweden long enough that sometimes the Swedish words come to me and I can't find the English words. So you have to, there's a lot of swing else get today. Uh, and then also, uh, easy to forget, a uh, crop. Uh, quite often the things that um, daylight wants are the opposite of what the sound requirement wants. So those two are often often fighting with one another. So it's important to realize that these never work in a vacuum. These are always working together. So I call it a bit of a perfect storm, all these things sort of in a vortex, uh, working against daylight all at once. So we do have a, a bit of a challenge. Now, a lot of you say, hey, wait, dark, I know some pretty nice rooms there, some pretty, like those patient rooms that we've done recently. They're, they're fantastic. What's this crazy Canadian talking about? Well, what I'm talking about is really buildings with dark parts. Um, maybe 90, 80% of the rooms are fine, and maybe you've got 20% that you've really got a challenge with. So I'm no uh, expert in hospitals. Uh, we, the majority of what we do are offices and, um, and, and housing. So a um, uh, little bit of typology here. I've ad adapted this from a presentation I saw down in Alma Dalla from Costed Architect. Uh, so a little history is, is I understand it. Maybe. Pavilion, Procuse. Central Hercus, Funkies Hercus, Interior Block Hercus, uh, Structure Hercus. So, what we've essentially seen is more or less, uh, in terms of daylight, and I've shown that in red, is um, in the beginning you have quite a bit of daylight as a healing strategy, moving then into the uh, more thick elevator centered uh, block Hercus, um, where you really, really have difficulty getting. Uh, daylight into the cores of those buildings. And then of course what we talked about, the, what I call it the Hukus Stada, where we're sort of maximizing our property, filling in, there's less and less open areas between the buildings. Well, let's talk about the code, why don't we? 
Uh, well, all you really need to know go till go till direct dixus. Sounds easy enough. What does that mean? Well, the code gives us a, a couple of guidelines, and I'm really simplifying things here. Uh, your 10% window area uh, and a 1% day or a daylight uh, a 1% daylight factor. Now you could show good till gone with another metric, but these are the ones that, that everybody's familiar with. If you're going to try to use another metric, you're also going to have to prove that that metric is a sound way to approach the problem. So most people obviously just go with this. Now one thing about the window area methods is widely applied and very misunderstood is it's not often we can use it. it there's a standard that goes along with this that it says uh, there's a number of restrictions on it. So, so uh, if I have a, a farming's vehicle to the building across the street more than 30 degrees, uh, I can't use it, for example. Um, there's a lot of things that make it very difficult to use, particularly in an urban context. So it's not often applicable. When it is applicable, you need to increase your window area uh, based on this obstruction angle for the buildings across the way. Um, that was often forgot, I think, in, in, the, in the 90s. And, and, uh, but now it's sort of starting the, the people who are the big, uh, big loaf, uh, Hanlegler, they're becoming more and more familiar with this as Bovark and prior, priorizes this, um, this aspect. So let's take a look where we stand. Um, well, we're in a bit of a revision now, hopefully. Uh, so there's some discussion, well, mainly focused around housing. We're saying, well, or next year, maybe it's 1% and so room is a half a percentage. Well, we don't know because sometimes it's nice to have kitchens back towards the core of the building and maybe they don't get daylight. We don't really know there, but what we, what we do know is that most of the focus, because politically housing is the hottest topic, um, that that's where we're, that's where we're focusing. Uh, down here, I've just done a sketch, Peshet room, 2%. We haven't even talked about that with both. It's, it, it hasn't really got on the, the agenda as of yet. Um, where this could end up, actually, is we could end up saying that it's just, say, the living room that needs 1%. That's entirely possible. So, uh, each room per, per, uh, uh, per dwelling uh, would need to... But uh, that, that's, that's neither here nor there right now. We'd, let, let me move on a little, explain a little bit what I mean by this daylight factor. We're divided into... When we think about daylight, you know, we, we think about a combination of sunlight and diffuse light from the sky. So direct sun and diffuse light. And so if I call my mom and I say, oh, how's, how's it? Oh, it's a nice sunny day. And th that's what people react to. This idea of dividing the two is, is what the code does. Um, but it's not so intuitive. Um, but it's what we have right now. There are more sophisticated methods, and I go back to the European standard, uh, which um, can calculate these two together. But for us right now, we're focused on 6322, and uh, 6323 direct soil use is only for housing. So for you, it's all about 6322. So we have this plain diffuse sky. Now, we also have Utrecht, which we have to consider as well. That's not really a code requirement, but it's something we should always consider when we're, we talk about what windows of daylight. So let's talk a little about this daylight. What's the daylight factor? Well, we have a diffuse sky, and then, so about like um, ah, November day, 12 o'clock, dark overcast. We all know those, I think. We don't think too hard. Point somewhere in the room, maybe, or an area. And that's what our daylight factor is. There's a magic sky when we calculate daylight factor. It's an approximation of this cloudy sky. It's three times darker at the top than it is at the sides. Now, I don't always know the daylight factor is affected very much by window size and, and um, what the materials inside the room is. In, in an early phase, uh, let's say room depth, in early phase I don't always know what those things, what those parameters are. So we're going to take a look at another indicator of daylight, which I call vertical sky component. Well, it's not me that's come up with the term, but vertical sky component or VSC. And that's how much light reaches your window. Because quite often we find there's doesn't matter what you do inside the room or how big your window is, because there's not enough light on the point of the facade. So a little test here. Uh, these are the things that pretty much affect uh, daylight. Uh, which one? Which one is the most important? Anybody? Eva. Yeah, no, no. It is the surrounding buildings. It's not the windows. 
So if we look, if we think about this in two dimensions, this gives us a good example of um, between zero and 25 from degrees from our window. Uh, we don't really need to do too much. The normal size window, normal room is going to pretty much have good daylight. 25 to 45, well, maybe we have to watch our room depth or maybe we put in a little larger window. Uh, 45 to 65, well, we need light materials, we need a larger window, we need uh, uh, limited room depth. We need, to, we need to chorus those things together to get it to work. Now, 65 degrees, whoa, that's getting pretty difficult. I'm not sure I can make that work with everything. So we'll go back to here, this vertical sky coefficient. And what you see here is uh, on your right, you have the scale. Now, this is how much light from the diffuse sky each surface sees. So you can see that on the roofs, it's yellow, it's 100%. On the vertical surfaces that are unobstructed, like here, it's largely green. Because, of course, a vertical wall can only see half the sky. And then, as things get obstructed, they get down more into the blue. So we can start to point out problem areas by, well, you can see sort of maybe up in that corner there, there's, if you had a window in there, you're probably not getting much light there. So we can begin to look at Problem, problem areas. Now, Karolinska, I think this will give you a little better, better idea of how, how it can be used. Is that music going to here somewhere? Oh, yeah, I took the hard way around. How many Canadians does it take to find a, la a laser pointer? Um, yeah, so you can see in there you've got a bit of challenge in that corner, you've got a challenge. And even back in the existing here, those rooms are going to have a lot of trouble getting a 1%. So it's a very nice sort of preliminary way to look at a design and say, well, where do, what, what are some of the things that we need to fix? A little bit of August thought in here, which is very dense, problematic, perhaps. Um, now, there's one misleading thing here when we use these hospitals, and that's that you guys always have these big, thick buildings. I don't really know you people, but that's what it is, big, <laughs> thick building. So that's green. That should be fine, but we know it's not. So this is, what, this is what we are with hospitals. All buildings have this shining that, and then a, some sort of cord or a gray zone, and then a daylight. Actually, it's police zone. But you guys, you, you guys really go overboard on the gray zone. You, you think it's the best thing ever. Now, I don't know what you're going to do with that. Let's talk about the easy stuff first. Uh, now, I know these, uh, these kind of rooms are going a little out of fashion, you know, multiple patient rooms. And that's probably for the better. Uh, dip depth of more than five meters, very difficult to get, uh, to get light in on there. Um, but what you have here is your daylight is coming from the top part of the window, more or less. What's happening down here is it giving you that much daylight. It's coming in, it's kind of reflecting out again. Why that's good though is it gives you your views, particularly where you're lying, when you're lying down. <coughs> now, Glarus, what's a little difficult about this solution was that here you had quite a bit of glare and a high risk of glare here, but then hardly glare here. So these patients have quite different needs, which means so this person experienced glare here, this full length blind, well, they would pull it. But you know, rightfully so. And then this poor person that wasn't experiencing glare and quite liked the light, they've got a bit of a problem. So it makes a lot of sense to sort of avoid from a daylight perspective uh, and, and, to, and to move to a, a single room solution. Now this is a lovely sketch. Uh, room is probably less than five meters. Looks nice and bright, and uh, definitely some healing uh, potential there in a, in a nice bright room like that. But I think maybe maybe we've overdone it a little bit just in this idea. Uh, I don't see any shading systems there, and uh, I think <laughs> I, I think there's also the issue of glare. When we bring daylight in, I think we also always have to be considering glare. I think. Back to the slide I showed you with the elderly woman. Um, nobody's going to be very comfortable with that. So, particularly the elderly are sensitive to glare, and, and I would hesitate to guess that people who are uh, healing uh, are probably very sensitive to it as well. Now, uh, this is probably seems to be a little bit more well proportioned. I have to question why, for the, why the sofa is in front of the, the window, but uh, I'll let your interior designer answer for that. Uh, I'm not so sure you need a window that big here, 
Uh, again, what we're looking for is to simulate a daylight factor between 2 and 5 percent. That, I think, begins to approach good daylight. Now, the problem with this darn daylight factor is it's not the best metric that we have. It's easy to do. Um, if you really want to get serious, uh, like Frederico, you start measuring uh, luminances on vertical surfaces. But unless somebody wants to give me 30,000, 40,000 corner per room to calculate, yeah, daylight factor is what you're buying. So, yeah, daylight factor 2 to 5 percent, that's okay. Um, but maybe, maybe this solution, it, it, maybe it could have been that for some rooms, uh, particularly because it's an unobstructed sky. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about this window here. Um, this blind here, I'm not so sure, it's just in the rendering. I get very sensitive about renderings. Uh, this blind is not going to give it enough glare protection. When you see these renderings, you should be saying, well, is that blind going to give you glare protection? Bring it up, bring it up early in the conversation. This top part of the window brings you the best, the, day, the most daylight deep into the room. So you want to make sure that the blind does not obstruct the window. Um, we've seen this often uh, in hospitals when they, people want to make a little um, heaven travelet, and you see these little cloth things that have sort of come <laughs> down here with some sort of nice pattern on them. And that's really defeating the original purpose of how the window was, was supposed to work. So um, get the proper blind in and then make sure it gets clear in the details, it gets clear of, uh, of the window itself, that it rolls up above the window. Um, obviously, it's in Indian being uh, a very important issue, and, and I would hesitate to say, depending on where the room is, its situation, this Indian is obviously not a problem here, but you may want to move the window to the right or to the left, depending on, on, on what's outside. Now, I know this is not really in vogue right now, uh, but I would say I pass the monster to a room it. Um, you want to make sure I know the idea right now with North Carolina is because to take the facade and make it fairly uniform. Um, but a patient room maybe has a different requirement that, that the three years you can't change it out to be a, a, a lab or something. It, it, those are going to probably require a different shading system and maybe even a different window form. So I'd have to be careful with this idea of one window fits all. When you start moving around your windows, I just want you to uh, know that you're, a symmetrically placed window is going to give you a much nicer distribution that are asymmetric placed windows. So just a little tip there. These two have the same uh, window area, but you can see 1.1 1 .1 there and 1.3 1 there. Oh, I really like this thing. Let me get one for home. I already drive my wife nuts, so this will this is really honey, can you get me that over there? <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyways, gray zone. Let's talk about the gray zone. Um, now we've talked about the easy part, let's talk about the whole What about all these wonderful people here that are that are working hard? Um, what, how, what about their work day? They spend the majority of time in this great store. They pop in here every so often. But uh, one thing I have to point out with this rendering, I, I think this is a wonderful beam of light here that comes so deep into the building that it meets right. I don't. I do not think this is physically possible. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's just this. You can see it's almost a whole. It's almost a horizontal, a horizontal direct sun there coming in. Fantastic. So don't be fooled by the renderings. Now, what we want, maybe, you know, here, here's an example of maybe what we're getting. And, and what do we want is, it's an awful lot of glass and it's an awful lot of running. People in the hospital, they don't like running around that much. We, we need to keep it. So maybe, maybe we, can, we can do a compromise. Maybe we can figure out something where there's Utblick, occasional gl glances to the outside views. Now, in the coming European standard, there's a, a quite an interesting chapter on views, uh, looking both at the, the distance of the, they give three levels, and so you've got the distance of the view, and then how wide the, the panorama is. So this, we'll call this, we'll call this bronze, we'll call this silver, we'll call this gold. Uh, now, they have another interesting thing which I quite, at first I was a little skeptical, but they call it view layers. And this is how interesting your view is. So. You've got, uh, for example, uh, layers can be one of three things. It can be sky, uh, a building, or a ground. Uh, when I say building, I mean an object in the landscape, usually a building. 
So the first one was, uh, I think it's, uh, oh, I think it's like 10 degrees, six meters minimum, and one layer. Well, you always have one layer, but I think they, they are specifically speaking about the sky on that one. I don't remember. Um, but anyways, as you you can see, these get increasingly, uh, increasingly better vistas. Now, Amelia Big Nab that we've been operating for a little while for retail under a five degree. Uh, at five degree, both the vertical and horizontal, and minimum five meters depth. So, with the new version of Million Big Nut 3, uh, we've now written in that it should be also for hospitals that we are going to have something called Utblick in the, um, I don't know, what would you, Rosemary, help me out here, what do you call that? Dynamis Vista Saison, right? <laughs> yeah. But we discussed where all the the patients and uh, those who works in the hospital they need they also need the daylight. So mm -hmm. we would like to have a suggestion that we would like to point out that the Utblick is very important for Mjabina, but we don't know where we have that. <laughs> no. But yeah. it's in because the it's we in the room right now. That with the architects. Yeah. Uh, but it would be what we call a bit of a dynamis vista saison, I think was the term they were using. Mm. So if we just run a building through this, uh, let's see, the green areas are have that utblick, the red areas do not. 60% uh, of this building. Now the threshold we're proposing would be a 50% threshold. So some rooms obviously excluded, uh, but some rooms obviously maybe there would benefit from a utblick. And this one. Now, the problem with this is we don't have any data. We've never tested it. So we don't know where the threshold should lie. Is 50 good? Is 40% of the area? Is 30? What is, what's, what's feasible? I can't say 100% because I know you guys all go bankrupt. The <laughs> whole system falls down. So, we're, so what actually, if I could back up, if anybody <laughs> is willing to do some uh, further work on this with us, um, we'd be very interested in partnering up, um, getting some funding and, and doing a little look at, at some of the existing buildings and what, what a reasonable expectation for that is. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about views, a uh, recent paper uh, by Barbara Matusiak, how we evaluate the view out through windows, largely what you see in the European standard. Okay, a little bit of a conclusion. Now, we've heard it time and time again. People are essentially why we're building these buildings. And, and as the users, they're the most valuable thing in it. And I think we've seen that daylight is something that people are really, really fond of. Um, and, and they benefit from. So, of course, in, in VORD and in, in the hospitals, you've got two doctors have their tools. We're familiar with them. These are my tools. These are how I propose to be able to regulate any issues. So we have a vertical sky component, which we can come in at an early phase and test mass, building massing, and see, well, where do we have our problems? And in particular, courtyards. If you're not familiar with a courtyard, it can be a little difficult to just sort of eyeball and say, is that, is that one getting enough light or not? That one's a challenge. Okay, what do we want to do about it? Well, maybe in this instance, there's a lab next to it and, and it's not so important. But maybe there are patient rooms supposed to be there. So we can identify problems with the face. Then you want to go in and you want to test for daylight factor. Now, think about, again, the 1% daylight factor. It's Regarded as a minimum in patient rooms. Uh, good daylight is going to be two, between 2% two and 5%. So you should be getting meeting it in the patient rooms at the very least. Now, the staff areas, that's obviously going to be more of a challenge. And then glare studies. We can always go in and take a look and say, well, where do we have problems with? Um, at what times? Uh, how much? Is it, a, is it a, a discomfort glare? Is it a perceptible glare? Is it a disabling glare? Um, 
good to know. And then how much, how do we, how do we mediate that? And then also, let's get into the gray zone. Now this is not part of the code. And we'll all, we're still left with the problem of how do we deal with these um, Arbitsplatze, these nursing stations that are away from the core. Do they meet the code requirement? I can't, I can't solve that for you. I'm sorry. I wish I could. But I can begin to say with Utbeck, we can begin to build an argument to say, well, yeah, the nursing station didn't meet the 1% daylight factor, but as they move around this space, they have a view out for majority of the time. And I think you see that here, and I won't point the laser because I don't want to get arrested. Um, you can see it here earlier in the morning when it was bright, and, and just what an impact that made to how we felt in this room. So you shouldn't be underestimated. It's part of the code, but I think I think it's something we can we can look at to build quality. And it was Rosemary. It's been you've been you were the one that brought this up in the beginning, and now I'm I'm entirely on the on the bandwagon. So uh, I I would really like to test uh, some existing buildings and see uh, uh, and see what a reasonable threshold. And I know SGBC is interested in that too, because right now we've sort of said, well, we've we've studied maybe five buildings and taken a best guess, and we landed at about 50% of compliant area, which, no, we think, we think that's reasonable, but like most things, it should be tested. So these are the sort of, in summary, these are the things that we have to work to solve. You know, we've got the sound requirement, uh, privacy, and, and privacy is always something that's important. Blending is risk thermos comfort, energy comfort, these things all have to go together. But just give these their proper weight. These always sort of work against this. But I think you'll find that they're very important to the people that, that are in these buildings. Um, that's what I'd like to say today.